So, uh, I was talking to Sarah the other day. I asked her to prom. Do you know what she said to me? Oh, I can't believe it. I don't know. I have freaking just no clue. She said, yes. Oh, that's pretty cool. Right, right on. Good job, pal. That, that's good for you. I'm very excited. She's a wonderful lady. That, how nice. How sweet. How, how, how wholesome. It is. I'm on reflection. That's not a very good story. I should, I should have just told you Sarah said yes to prom. We talked about this yesterday. Right, well, you know. right, right. Settle down, everyone in this classroom. Jimmy, stop throwing your penis around. Don't be a bell end. Manimal, uh, Corin. I think I think teachers aren't allowed to mention penises. Wait, boop, boop, boop. Are you talking back to the teacher? I am the teacher. I am professor. No, I'm just saying you're you're you recon- to, you're, you're, you're recognizing you're recognizing son. You're, you're get recognizing you a minor's dick. We'll I believe in sex education. They call it the male genitalia. I'll get my but, genitalia but, out right now, son. You I know that would be a crime. You want to? Uh, you want to go, professor? Professor Colossal Cock. That's why I'm in charge of said. Of sexual education. You're going to get an education. You're going to get an hour of detention with me. No pants and, are and, allowed. Oh, okay. Can I wear shorts? I don't think he's really a teacher. No. You got me. You got me. Hands up. <laughs> you busted. I'm busted. Okay, we'll drop the act, guys. I am actually not a teacher. It was me all along. It was vacant. Woo! Oh, freaking, your acting was so impeccable that I literally had to second guess even though I was in the very skit myself. I am Professor whatever, something called. <laughs> Professor am... Ting. No, I I like it. This is my title for today's episode. I'm the commander of of Kenobi. Professor Kenobi, that's me. We, we it's not it's not a classroom. It's okay. Put away your textbooks and your calculators and you know all the sexual education tools that you would require because Put that graph calculator. I mean, it, it, it's it's kind of weird you had that all out to begin with. Yeah, well, you know our acting was convincing, so you know. Put all that shit away, guys, because it's, it's fun. It's not a classroom. This is a show. This is a podcast all about manga and anime and, well, manga and anime and a lot of bullshit as, as an aside. But we're going to get into it. Hope you enjoy it. It is episode 151 of the Manga Raiders Community Happy Hour podcast. My name is Simon, better known as Vacant. I am the professor, and for some reason I'm adopting a weird upwards inflection on everything that I'm saying. Uh, to my virtual left, he is the... Man with a plan. It's Manimal. Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting episode. I'm the man for meals, the spaghetti line, and so just uh, stay tuned, everybody. And to his virtual left, rounding out the holy trinity, Sarah said yes, because he's blessed. It's Corin. <laughs> I have come to the conclusion that hamburgers are the perfect food. Uh, I, I don't okay. know about that. I've been thinking about this a lot recently. Okay, why? Oh, because a hamburger is a general concept, and you can kind of make it whatever you want. Yeah. You see, you might say that it's just a sandwich, but it's not just a sandwich. It's a cooked meat sort of some something sandwich, right? There's a main loaf of some ingredient that has been cooked and as that's what makes it the hamburger yeah it's still kind of limited though like in the hamburger genre that's pretty pretty specific yes but you can have anything you want on it you can it's a complete meal yeah but i can also put anything anything i want on like a on a yeah pizza yes but a pizza is not as easily portable Okay, okay, portability, definitely a factor. Everyone, today's episode, portability, burgers, very portable, very true. Undeniable. It depends on the pizza. Any burger you care to name, you can hold in one hand. Okay, you know what, that's true. If I got a thing of crackers, if I got a thing of crackers, I could put anything in crackers, but, you know, how many am I going to hold per hand? You know, it's definitely, like, a bit of a pressing issue. What about And it's not going to be warm and filling. It's not going to be warm. Big Mac in one hand? Of course you can. Have you seen a Big Mac recently? They're, like, two inches tall. (laughs) Were you a freaking baby? (laughs) I don't eat Big Macs. I don't know. Aren't they like twice the size of a quarter pounder? I don't know. I don't eat. I eat them with two hands. I'm not a fucking invalid. I mean, I eat it with two hands too, but I don't have to. You freaking one hand burger, one hand for the fries. You yeah, just man. Take your time, man. Just have a bite of the burger, chew that shit up, and then eat some of the fries. You don't have to shovel them in. Why are you on the clock? I mean, yeah. a lot of times, yeah. What was the last time you had nowhere to be when you were eating food? 
Uh, Most like, times, like I the other day when I was food. at the other day when I was at the sushi restaurant eating food. <laughs> the bad example. <laughs> I don't, I, you know, what kind of food you guys might wonder what kind of food I was eating there. I don't know if I want to tell you. I just feel like most times, either you're at breakfast and you got to get to work, or you're at lunch and you got to get back to work. What if you're home? Well, then you're home, man. But that's not most times you're eating. Well, mm. I mean, I have one meal a day at work. I mean, I, I I I wake up like two hours before I, I got to go anywhere, so I got a lot of time to eat breakfast. You know, you're a monster. Breathings. Yeah, well, Breathings. you know, I like to, yeah, yeah, okay, we get it, I know. Brexit you and your breakfast, but tell me how your week was, Manimal, you might as well get talking about it now we set the ball off, rolling. Yeah, yeah might as well talk about a thing or two. My week has uh, been pretty normal, doing the same old, same old stuff, nothing, uh, nothing actually too exciting, uh. I didn't mention it. I, you know, like I said, I always report whenever there's an interesting character in the shop. This time there is a Scottish man wearing a Darth Vader onesie. I thought that was pretty spectacular. It might not be worth noting, you think. However, if you see something like that and it's a Scottish man, it's incredible. Same with the Australian guy who called. That was pretty cool as well. You know, I always get pretty excited when I see or hear stuff like that. Yeah, I, I mean, to be honest, you say that's not noteworthy, but seeing a genuine Scottish person in a Darth Vader onesie is probably going to be an interesting guy. So it's one you want to keep tabs on and follow for a little bit, at least. Oh, oh, most definitely. Um, otherwise, I've been doing, you know, I've still been playing Spider-Man a lot, because like I said, it's a good freaking game. I'm trying to get that 100%, because it's just something to play on, like I'm playing it right now. Beating up those bad guys, you know, just giving them a pounding. Uh, I knew buying that Tomb Raider game was a bad idea because I only played like an hour of it since last episode, and it's like it's it's like not bad, but it's the kind of game you play and you're like, why did I spend this much money on it? Because it's it's not like a unique experience or like a the only game you're gonna have like it, you know, like Spider Man is. It's just kind of like, yeah, this is cool. It would be Same cool for Spider Man. It would be cool for those twenty bucks. I also got that. Uh, uh, the Dragon Ball Fighters game. Uh, oh shit! Yeah, yeah. I haven't played too much of it yet. I like the uh, layout of it, like um, the Marvel versus Capcom kind of thing. Um, I, I never really know what I'm doing these games. Like I just keep hitting stuff, and then all of a sudden it does like some super move or whatever, and I'm just kind of like, yeah, I that's did that. That's what you do. Just button but, mash till you know what you're doing. That's why I like Smash, because at least Smash feels, like, more controlled and there's less, like, crazy stuff in it like this, you know? But it's kind of cool. And uh, finally, I freaking hopefully got the ball rolling on my next album. Uploaded two new songs, SoundCloud.com slash Cantilla, K-A-N-T-T-I-L-A. Got some, got a got a bit of a spooky track on there. Ooh. And a bit of a, bit of a non-spooky track. Tis I've listened season. to it. It is a bit of a spooky it is a bit of a spooky compared to my other songs. It yes. registers on the spookometer. Yes, it is, it is in fact on the spookometer. And um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really have. Um, I guess well, I already talked about that one sushi place, so it's not really much of a restaurant review. That's okay. You can store it's, up the restaurant reviews. It's it's good, and there's only ever like two people in the place, so it works. That's what you want. When you find a nice little food establishment and no other dickheads around, it's all good. Yeah, pretty much. This is yeah. the back-to-school episode, so there's a pro tip for you guys. There's a little... <laughs> there's going to be nuggets of information in there. going to give you an education, and we're going to ram it right down your dink hole. Right down. Oh, yes. That's exactly what we're going to do. Otherwise, yeah, that, that's about it. I don't have anything else to say. Safe. Safe. I don't know what I'm doing there. I don't know what's going on in my brain at the moment, but I know what I do. Bit of a meltdown. I do. I think I have a stroke every time we start a show. As soon as there's a microphone in front of me, that's when my brain shuts down. Uh, don't mention more. strokes today. It's a bad day for strokes. It's, it's a bad day for strokes. We'll get into it. Okay, uh, Corin, how was your uh, how was your week then? Well, I worked a lot. Did you happen to have a stroke during that time? I did not. We're going to get to the stroke bit come um, 
talking about the anime for this year. But um, uh, no, it was okay. I kind of just didn't do much on the weekend. I uh, went in to work on Saturday. I uh, got my Halloween costume together because it's never too early. Gee, give me I was a gonna say. Wait, wait, we got to guess. We got to guess. What's the what's the genre of the costume? I, I've got to say though, the thing is, right? All the Halloween stores open right after Labor Day, right? And then the stock just slowly drains the closer you get to Halloween. That makes sense. So if you wait until the last minute, you're gonna go in there and get like shit, right? You're gonna like get an ill-fitting, you know, what's the uh... it. Clown it, from it, it. Uh, yeah, well, that was in there. I was trying to think. There's not really a this is it this year kind of costume this year, really. Not really, no. Like was there was a bunch of like smaller displays from like a bunch of different like properties, mm. but like Gotta there was not one adventure. that's like clearly this is the one this year. Like not even Black Panther had a giant thing. It was just in the superheroes. It was Black Panther this year? It, well, was it this year? Or was it? Like, it was after last Halloween. That's for sure. It was. It was the beginning of the year. I think. Holy it's shit. within this. It's within this Halloween cycle. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Because it was. It was in like February. It come out. Jesus Christ. That's weird. They make too many of these movies in a year. Yeah, they do. Yeah, that came out like a couple months before event. That's so weird. But anyway, that's besides the point. But yeah, like I yeah, said, you gotta you, to guess is it what kind of costume it is. No, you gotta you gotta give us a hint. You gotta give is us a hint. Is it like I will tell you, it involves a beard. You're a freaking wizard. I am a wizard. Oh Can my god, what kind of you wizard? <laughs> You're probably like probably like Merlin esque or Lord of the Rings. Are you? No, no, I have got it. There's dick a keyword. Wizard. You are a not dick, dick wizard. wizard, but you're the closest. I'm a sexy wizard. <laughs> oh well, in, in which I I am dressing like a regular wizard, and the sexy comes pre-installed. Hey. Okay, well, I'm getting confident up in here, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a it's an easily retractable robe. He wears yeah, nothing calm, underneath calm it. Calm down That's there, calm down there, Ron Jeremy. It, uh, it it's pretty good though. It's uh it's basically a giant like beard and wig combo kind of deal. It's mm-hmm. just like giant and gray, and then I got like. I can't believe it's not ghost face like robe thing and then like a bone necklace and like a wooden stick. He's the uh shaman of sexy. The shaman of sexy. I don't know. I'm just going to maybe pick up a few more accoutrements as the time goes by cuz here's the problem is that you want to put together a cool and kind of complicated Halloween costume enough to have some flair but you also have to think how well am I going to manage all this when I'm drunk? Practicality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Any prop needs to be drunk-proof or something that you're willing to leave behind or lose. Like, that, all to go, that thing probably costs, like, 30 bucks, so it's not that big of a deal. Like, everything was, staff. like, 5 bucks here, 10 bucks here. The stick is, like, a plastic thing you screw together at the middle. Again, it costs, like, 10 bucks. Not that big of a deal if I get Is it a sexy spent. stick? Uh, it is slightly phallic. Oh, hey, sh- shout out to yeah. the time. Shout out to the time that me and my friends were in the Halloween store. My friend hit me with a Thor hammer and I overreacted and broke it in the store and we just left. See, I didn't just do that. Imagine if it was a uh, sexy stick. Imagine it was a dildo <laughs> on a pole. Oh, the dildo Thor hammer. The, oh my God, I bet that exists. The four dildo. Oh yeah. What's yeah. this for? What's it called? Molin Molinur Molinur. Here Molinur. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever his hand is called. Oh Milner. Milner. The Milner. Uh, excuse, Milder. excuse me. Don't. Isn't that Milner? Nasty. It's not that hard. Come on. I, I can't fucking say it. You're saying it's not that hard. It would be hard if it was a dildo. Milner. Yeah. It's All probably. Right. It's made of a star. It's probably pretty hard. <laughs> All right now. Okay. Let's well, enough about dildo sticks. Let's um. Yeah. yeah, you you've been freaking bringing this shit since the beginning of this episode. You're freaking like on on some weird, weird kind of tone here today. Right? Okay, I guess Dick Wizards because Dick Wizards is quite a big <laughs> patriot of the show. Like it's um you know part of our heritage. And it was close. He was a sexy wizard. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. I was on the right track. So you know, it's not without due cause. That's why I'm going there. I'm going to the well because I'm being led there. So I'm sorry. 
So yeah, no, I got that worked out, and I finally got around to making curried chicken, which went less than smoothly. But it's not my fault. I'll say that. Uh, the recipe I got, the res- the person, whoever wrote the recipe, I don't know who. I got it online. Um, but I'm pretty sure was trying to kill whoever was trying to make that recipe, right? Freaking so anti shout But I don't know if you, I don't know if you know about this about chicken, but you can't eat it raw or it will give you food poisoning. You can't. That's very true about you chicken. You can't. But the thing is, they told the recipe calls for it to be cooked on medium high on one side for five minutes, and then on the other side on low heat for three minutes. That doesn't... and that's the entirety of the cooking of the chicken breast, and that is not enough time. I was gonna say that really doesn't sound like enough time to cook a chicken breast. See, and that's the problem. Is I was just first of all, I found out it's it was chicken breast and zucchini, and I did not have a big enough pan for both. So I had to mess around in the middle of it to get a second pan, and then I was just kind of reading along as I went. I wasn't, you know, pre-reading too much stuff. And then it got to it, and I'm like, looking between the recipe and the stove and the recipe and the stove and the recipe and the stove, trying to figure this out. And in the meantime, things start burning, and the smoke detector goes off. But next time I make it, it's going to go smoothly because I know what mistakes I made and what needs to be fixed. Yeah, your smoke detector's hella sensitive. Don't ask how I know that, but yeah, just so you know, that's uh, that's a sensitive little smoke detector you got there. What were you doing in my apartment? Maybe one day I was making breakfast and uh, it decided to smoke up a little too much. Are you sure you're not bad at cooking? No, I was hell- <laughs> that that breakfast. I didn't hear no complaints from you. That was a great I, old little breakfast. I mean, I only saw the parts that I ate. So exactly. you, you you guys didn't hear about the I time that I didn't that, check uh, the trash afterwards. <laughs> you no, guys so have all no... it is. Sorry, go on. <laughs> no, never mind. I was gonna say all it is is I'm not used to cooking on a gas one. That was a gas stove. And it is a gas heat, stove. Heated oil up way faster than um than I'm used to. So uh you know it was okay. It's when you'd gone out and you came back and the door was wide open of like the um the porch balcony thing. Yeah, I there. remember that. It just got a little hot. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I walk in and the air conditioning's also on full blast and the door's just hanging open. I had an inclination of maybe what happened. <laughs> Forget lighting the place up here. Yeah, I was fucking a little pyro over a little arsonist. But yeah, little what arsonist. are you going to say, Manimal? You need to tell us now because you said did you, uh, you didn't hear about the time. I was going to make a joke about how I almost burnt down the nearest place making cereal, but then I realized that it wasn't a good joke. <laughs> Oh, okay. No, it wasn't. I'm glad you didn't say that. But now it's committed to air anyway. Cooking is easy as long as you kind of take it slow and yeah. have a recipe that isn't bumpkiest in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Cook chicken. There's another second lesson. We're in home economics now, motherfuckers. Welcome to home economics. Cook how, how to cook a chicken. Cook it long Big and ass. hard. <laughs> Do you like chicken? Do you hey, like... Guys. Cook a chicken? Do you want to cook some chicken with me? Maybe come okay, back to my now, little now kitchen. You're taking, you're okay, do you want to cook some chicken? Come back to my little kitchen. That has to be a song lyric. I <laughs> does it. <laughs> come back to my little kitchen and maybe I'll let you maybe I'll let you work my stove. That is that's the sign you're a serial killer and you should not go home with that man. Maybe I'll this has been a PSA. What if my little kitchen? What if I, what if my little kitchen? You just means basement kitchen. That is a t- that's not any better. Most people now. don't have basement kitchens. That's my not normal. Grandma does. Are yeah, well, your, your grandmother Italian. a serial killer? No, the she Close. just went to the basement. She just you Italian. never know. Yeah, so that's where you make like the spaghetti and stuff. Make my spaghetti. Bring back that <laughs> meme. It's not dead. <laughs> Why well, one person still says it, it's okay. I mean, I'm I'm definitely a fan of it, but like, whenever you have a meme that's just like one line, it's you know it's a little challenging to take keep it, it going. You know? Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. I was sad that Uganda Knuckles died out so fast because I. Well, I was I was surprised. It didn't really have like it was. It's pretty funny, but it the didn't like have was, a lot of potential. It was funny in the hands of the people who did it first, and then you got a bunch and of then, fourteen then year olds who were just yeah. then just made it racist, like ha 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 ha. Ebola. <laughs> well, 
Yeah, you it, it quickly evolved from Fuck. pretty funny to then everyone keeps doing it. You're like, okay, stop. Okay, just, just, just no, just stop it. Just fuck off, mm-hmm. little little widget. Roll back to 2011 when me and my friend went on the IG and forums and posted Lee Monkey Face everywhere. You absolute fucking mad lad. He yeah. did it. He did it. <laughs> Don't know if you can still be on the show because you know we're not that we're not that I anti, know. we're not that um, <laughs> anti PC. Yeah, I know. I know it was pretty pretty hardcore me to post Lee Monkey Face everywhere, but. Uh, Sometimes in life, you just gotta confess to your prior sins. Confess to your sins. And hope you'll be forgiven. But um, what else did you did you do there, Corin? Sorry. No, that was about it. I had my heart turn, torn up by anime today. Got some writing done. Uh, opened up a bottle of wine for the first time in the season. Hey, that was the wine popping open. I think we just heard. Well, I have a very full wine glass right now because I realized I could either just keep up getting up to pour more wine glasses or just fill it all the way to the top. That's the that's the best idea. But the point Whatever is involves less trips. You got to if you open a bottle of wine, you got to finish it that day. <laughs> that's sound advice. There we go. Number 3 on the lesson plan. If you open a container of alcohol, down that bitch. It's right there on the syllabus. You don't want to yeah. The syllabus. Freaking throwback to the word syllabus. It's right there um, you know, on the Home economics. After that, you take the underage drinking class. It just teaches you the pros and cons and how to get the alcohol. Um, for me, personally, I posed as my brother when I went to the paper shop. You know, the guy thought I was my older brother because we looked very similar, so I'd wear his hat and I'd be able to get beer. <laughs> but then I, I really, that was really funny because when I used to do that, I'd overthink the fuck out of it. So I'd be like, right, okay, my brother's three years older than me. He's 19. I'm 16. Right. What do I need to talk about to make me sound what? adult? Yeah. And like you're trying to think, what's an adult conversation? The weather. I'll bring. I don't need to say anything. This this interaction doesn't need to happen. It's not required yeah. at all for me to go in, give him money, well, give him the beer and money, and then he'll give me the beer and that's done. But um, I'd come in and go, you're right, and I'd feel compelled to be like, right, I need to sell him on this. So I'm like, yeah, just a little cold out there, ain't it? Yeah, just got back <laughs> from work. Like I really think I'd be like, yeah, I've just got back from yeah. work. The car's still running, so luckily the heat's on because I've got a car, you see, because I'm uh, 19 yeah. years old. Yeah. yeah, got a missus with a baby on that, the way and a mortgage. See, yeah, that's just no, sad. No, but that's right. That's that's how you know. Like at the shop, whenever people have like an elaborate story, that's how yeah. you know it's probably not right. Like someone came in with this old bike, and he's like, oh, "I'm giving it to my grandpa. He's turning in a he's turning a hundred, so I'm uh I'm giving him this bike. I just want to put it in storage for a bit. Uh, you know, he's gonna be pretty excited uh, to ride this bike." Ball. And he, he said it like three times about his a hundred year old grandpa, and it's like, "I'm just putting it in storage. It's his birthday, and I don't want him to see it." It's like. Yeah, and you know what? He didn't come back on the day he said he would, so... Uh, huh. There's a grandpa out there turning 100 who was promised a bike somewhere <laughs> in Canada. Who... Do you want to give an 100-year-old a bike, number one? Why not? Why not? So there's probably Why not? some fit 100-year-olds out there. My, my fit, not sexually well, attractive. I'll tell you that my, my, really great, my great, great aunt lived to that age, and I don't think she could have gone on a bike. Look, some, you know, if you go, um, where's that island in Japan? Okinawa? Where, like, they're all old as fuck, but they're still, like, super healthy and loving life at, like, the age of 90, so maybe they'd want bikes. You know, <laughs> there all... you go. There, there isn't an age limit on bikes. It's not like Lego. Well, yeah, but bikes, you still need to, like, keep it There's upright. There's not maybe. an age limit on Lego either, if we're honest. They just well, get more complicated Legos. They were like well, two, yeah. It said like age two to ninety nine or something like that, didn't it? No, we're talking about Lego, not actually like no, Lego, like Lego. Lego used to be like on this show. I think Lego used to be like to fourteen or sixteen, and some of the Bionicles went up to oh, what age was it? Almost like eighteen, I think. Some of them. Yeah, said. there is a toy ranking thing. I don't know who designs that, Again. but like if you see Lego's advertising, it is all age. However, if we're talking about Lego, the person, he is purely 18 and up at this point. I just wanted to specify that, <laughs> just in case. Bionicle, no. Lego, 14 to 16. The toy, not Lego, the co-host of the happy hour. Purely 18 plus goth cat girls. That's all he's after. So, you know. If you, you will settle people, for just one or the other. I mean, or neither, probably. Lego's list of criteria is 18 and over and breathing. 
So if you are either of those things, or, well, preferably both of those things, then uh, hit him up and he'll be okay. If you guys are 18 but you're not breathing, still hit him up, give him a little bit of a shout and see uh, when he comes back to you on that one. And please come on the show. We love, would love to know how you're getting along with your new undead life. Oh, well. No, I was going to try to do something very funny there. zombie noise that you would do? Oh, <laughs> no, that was, I, was trying to, I was trying to sound like somebody who doesn't breathe, but then I realized that all they'd sound like is... <laughs> I thought you were just doing like a weird voice. Like, hey, I haven't breathed in about two years now. It's getting real windy up in here. I can hold my breath for a very long time, you see. I recently got my swimming badge. Because now I don't have to worry about the old drowning. I just like Sonic the Hedgehog. I catch a little bit of the water bottle and I keep going. I'm going to watch it. Sonic get all them emeralds. He go in the water zone and I'm like, Sonic, I'm going to get you all them rings on the water. Because I, I don't even breathe. When I play Aqua Ruin, I don't even have to come up because I'm out of water the whole time. The music don't even get all serious for me. You don't get fast paced because I, I don't never, breathe. I don't even never get no countdown. I, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Um, yeah, my week, not much has happened. Um, except, speaking of water, we were almost <laughs> under fucking water because the heavens opened on Thursday. Um, we're getting the... Re- well, thankfully, we're getting only the remnants of uh, of the hurricanes because, you know, we didn't get the serious shit. Um, but it turns out our building, our office that we work in, is so wonderfully designed that not only is the roof the most porous thing, I've, it's the most porous material known to man. How many, if it rains once, we get a leak. People come in, I don't know who these builders are, but they must be the most intelligent motherfuckers in the world because they make it look like they fixed it and then it immediately leaks again the next time it rains. Either we need to ring a mo- another company or start from scratch. But the roof wasn't enough. The roof wasn't the only thing that leaked. Um, we had it through the floor. So there's a there's a brook, a stream that goes around the side of our office that really over, like, swelled up to fuck because it rained really heavily. Um... That starts to seep down, and there's a. Turns out we have some cavities in our flooring <laughs> that cause the water to well up um, through the office floor. Um, a lot of the electrics are obviously based into the floor, and a lot of the wiring. So we've had to power down like the downstairs of the office. Luckily, luckily, it's um, not touched any of the studios that we've got because not only would that be millions of pounds worth of damage, but also there's a lot of a live like, high-voltage kind of boxes and shit like that for all the lighting rigs and that. Oh, that would have been messy. That would have not ended well for us. So thankfully, for the moment, we've we've held that shit back. But that was fun dealing with, because I was uh, sort of supervising on that day. So I was just like, I don't know. What what do we do at this point? We're flooding. What do we do? Who do we ring? I don't know. Do you know who you can ring? Who? (laughs) I don't (laughs) never see you in a kind of picture flood like this one there. It looks like you need to get them <laughs> damn wires and plugs. I'll go down there. Because like, it's just, do you know when you realize how incapable you are and how ill-prepared you are for anything? So it's like, right, okay, just turn the, everyone's like, just turn the fuses off on there. Just just turn, just cut off the electricity to there. All right, where's the power supplies and shit? No, no, I'm still laughing about this. Why is this? It's not that funny. I'm still laughing about it. Yeah, that's why you got to call Zombie John the IT guy. Zombie John... <laughs> Let me take a look at them their water pipes and let me go under there and give me a bit of a wire and <laughs> I'm gonna get myself down under there and now I'll, I'll make sure that none of this shorts out for you. Free of charge just cause I love y'all. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, John. I, I know your pain on that. If you go to my office, right? Along the front window you'll see that all the computers are like raised up on two by fours. Because okay. If you go out to the front on the outside, you'll see that there's like a landscape drains at the base at the front of the building, and mm-hmm. they're all above the base of the window. <sighs> so, it, so you see, see what, that's a problem. Going? Yeah, irony is a poorly designed building that houses a lot of engineers. Ah, but we didn't design it. 
True. It takes a lot of money to fix things. Not a lot of money to get it right in the first time. <laughs> but yeah, we uh, that was fun. Like I say, it's just that feeling of, I don't know what the fuck we do in this situation. Do it, where, where, what are we doing? So we just fumbled around. We managed to shut off the power and shit and just like, I was like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Leave it. Because it was, this was late at night as well. So there's not like anyone else in. Like, because it's 24-7. So we're there just shrugging our shoulders and holding our dicks and just being like, I don't know what's going on. But it was okay. We, the building didn't, sh- the electrics didn't break. The building's still standing just about. So we're all good. And we got through that together. Um, other than that, I have been writing again, but I've switched tact to a different story. I've actually gone back to the Persona story that I was writing this time last year, just because I start reading... Do you know when you start reading your old notes, and you start reading your old stories through, and then you just get that bug, and you're like, right, I've got to carry on with this. So I'm doing that again. Probably because I just restarted playing Persona 4 Golden as well, for the third or fourth time, but you know. It's a good game, what can I say? And it's on the Vita, you know? God bless the little Vita, even though they're going to stop. Got to stop production the next job. Well, that's why you got to start posting stuff, man. Got to start posting that shiz. You got to um, fill other people's, like, uh, voids because, you know, they, they're they also suffering. See, that's how the cycle of fan fiction works. Everyone's just feeding everyone else's uh, mm-hmm. needs. That's what I'm going to yes. do. So look Be out for that, needs. everybody. My uh, little, at least Nair will be excited. At least Nair will be happy to see something. And then he'll Persona have to feign four. joy over that Persona rather than arm edition. Yeah. I mean, maybe just watching Bleach again. That got me real fired up for, like, Shonen and shit. I was like, do you know what? Fucking love Bleach. I remember how good the first season was. The You know, when we watched the live-action film, I was like, this recaptures that spirit of, oh, it was just the perfect storm of shit for me. Don't at me if you don't like Bleach. I do. It's fucking good. If you want to diss it, diss it. Whatever. I don't really give a fuck about your opinion, to be honest. But I like it. What can I say? Um, What else have I done? I don't fucking know. I'm trying to... I am a little distracted, I will admit, guys. I'm just going to put my hands up and apologize. Because I'm trying to grind through the event on WWE Supercard as well on my phone right now. I'm grinding to shit. It's a stupid free-to-play mobile game that's taken over my life. And it shouldn't have, but it has. And it's basically top trumps, but with superstars like WWE wrestlers. And you've got—I'm I'm trying to get that Bailey. I'm going to get that Bailey card because if I get two of them, I can combine them into a pro. I'm going to do it. I've got three hours to go. I need to do it. See, I, I have a solution for you. What? J- just delete the app. No, I can't do that. Yeah, like I can play. I'll... Like right now, I'm playing Spider-Man, but I'm still in the episode. I'm still in it to win it. You know. I mean, I've been very present, I would like to think. It's just obviously... <laughs> no, I mean, uh, is, is your general problem of having played too many free phone games? Just delete the app. Just, well, just delete it, man. I, I've, I've, I've spent too many hours on Final Fantasy Brave Exvius, which, don't get me wrong, is a wonderful Final Fantasy game. The 10% of the time there's actually, like, new story content to it. <laughs> the rest of the time it's just bullshit grinding. Oh, I love, but that's my wheelhouse. No bullshit grinding. That's I'm all about that bullshit grinding. Like this is a never-ending grind because every time you get to the top tier, they release a new tier. Um, even though I took a year off it because I've played it off and on for like three years, but um, I took about a year off and then I was way behind. So I'm trying to desperately catch up and I'm doing it. I'm gonna do it, guys. Believe in the heart of the cards and it's gonna happen. So you know, I, I don't know why I mentioned that. I just wanted to let everyone know. Why I'm a little distracted, that's all. But, fuck it, that's all I've got to say. I ain't got nothing else of interest to say or speak on. So instead, we're going to roll into some news, and are we going to have a jingle? Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) The news. The news is, I ain't really got any. You I have dingus. a perplexing story, which has been unfolding just today. Go for it. And I don't know what it's called, but there seems to be like a weird, sexy Bowser slash Peach fusion going oh, yeah. around on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've seen some art of that. I'm not opposed to it, but I don't know what it is. It's kind of interesting. Uh, it's pretty, I, pretty. I can't tell you. I, I, I think I've seen some like 
short comics that have been somehow dreamed up in the space of an hour. Yeah, there's like there's like a lot of art, and a lot of different artists have done stuff for this this I, girl I, Bowser. I, it's like it is, I think, supposed to just be Bowser, but Bowser is Peach. I like, I, I think I think it's just girl Bowser. Yeah, but it's a human. Yeah, like, and it looks exactly like Peach. Oh, I don't know. I some some things in life yet. some things in life can't be explained. If you get on anime Twitter stuff. Just get on our Twitter. It's there. I will have a look because I've taken a little break from Twitter because I was reading. I caught the fallout of the uh, the the shitstorm that's going on in the furry fandom at the moment with um, a, a furry YouTuber. I think his name's Kuro or something. Um, but ugh, some of the accusations that are going around, I was like, that's enough of the internet for me today. See, I only get on Twitter when I'm on this podcast. And I don't read anything. I just look at photos. That's probably the safest option, to be honest, because you're only going to find terrible opinions, us included, because, you know, I put plenty of shit on there um, when I'm active. It's going to be terrible opinions or cheap plugs. That's pretty much all of Twitter. And the show as well, actually. That's probably an accurate assumption of this. That's lesson number four. Surf Twitter in safe mode so you don't uh, don't accidentally see... The ac- I mean, even I haven't even seen anything bad, but it's just the accusations leveled against this dude, and it's just, oh, I mean, talking about, I guess calling him a zoophile would be soft, because it's quite... A zoophile? Like, as in he was... He fucks animals? Yes, but there's... Uh, yes, but worse. <laughs> and yes, a lot of fucked up shit. I don't even want to discuss. Makes me feel slightly queasy just thinking about it, so... Let's move on. Here's I'm not, here. I'm not a pheasant Bacon. plucker. I'm a pheasant plucker's son. I'll keep on pheasant plucking till the pheasant plucking's done. Boom, boom. Faken always in on the drama, always giving us a little bit of a report. Cannot help but keep his nose in on the scene. Oh, you know what? No, I will hold my hands up. I love that kind of shit. I love drama. I love Who shit. Who doesn't, though? I Who love does? shit. Yeah, we Everyone know you made story. an entire Twitter just for that reason. And don't use it. But I, I mean, like, it's it's fun. Cause, what? You know, I, I, don't, never, I don't know the password. I don't know why I would even want to use it. No, mine. Oh, I thought you meant my personal one. Yes. You made one for that. Yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. I don't use it. Oh, you don't use it. I thought you told yeah. telling me not to use your personal Twitter, and I couldn't figure out how I would. <laughs> I was yeah, going to say. Yeah, I'm, I was dead I'm confused. Okay I was like, that. I don't want you to use my personal Twitter. Well, you can if you want, but, you know. Do you guys want to know a, a terrible joke that I came up with the other day? Go for it. Okay, so um, it goes like this, all right? It's customer and clerk. Can I use the washroom? Why? Pop. Huh? People ought to pee. So, yeah, uh, Twitter <laughs> is... Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do. I, I, I will hold my hands up and admit I love a good shit fit. I love people melting down on Twitter. I love people arguing on YouTube. I love all that oh, kind no, of drama. I, I, do, I grew like up it, on that shit. Like I, on the same hand, I hate when people make videos about all this stuff, but then sometimes I can't help but just like watch them. I love it. It's great. It's like why I like. I think I personally enjoy critiques, like when people well, are taking down things that they dislike. Well, it's kind of interesting to... the whole genre of taking down YouTubers. Like whenever they just like all their heinous acts and stuff, it, like catch yeah. up with them. And then there's whole videos, like, just, like, that's what he sells, like, the nostalgia critic at, like, the beginning of the year or something like that. And, um, and, um, now it's happening with, like, mundane Matt and shit like that. Oh, my God. Have you, did you watch the stream of mundane Matt? Yeah, yeah, I did. I mean, look, I'm, I'm all for, like, you know, douchebags getting what's coming to them. But I just don't think... I think we're just like desperate for some form of entertainment, and this is what we're finding yeah, for some reason. It's, sometimes it's kind of petty. Like the Monday math thing is just like false flagging. Yeah, that's petty. But uh, that's the other was... thing is there's so many. I've seen like everyone at some point, every internet personality called out as a pedophile. And well, I, yeah, I, yeah, I can count on one on hand moment. how many of those times it's actually, it's actually been true. true. Yeah, I know that's that's definitely like a easy go to because if if, if enough people say it, it starts sounding pretty bad. It's, 
easy to say and because you would think this is because i guess it's a symptom of the internet you would go no one's just gonna say that no one's just gonna pull that out their arse and just level that accusation at someone because that is a big fucking accusation to make. it might have but used to be true but nowadays it's the exact opposite and exactly i, I feel like will. we all kind of know it's true that people just pull shit like out of like that out of their asses, but we don't actually do the research. Like Snopes is two clicks away. Yeah. Oh god, yeah. It's like conspiracy theories. I actually saw it today because me and uh, a friend of mine. He. Do you know when you can see people falling down the rabbit hole? So he is going hardcore on on conspiracy theories. And about three or four weeks ago, he started watching a lot of this. He just watches it at work. He spends spends eight hours just watching conspiracy theory videos about all kinds of things, you know, lizard people, the Illuminati, um, the fluoride in water, calcifying the brain, and all that kind of stuff. Um, A real Jesse him, Ventura up in B, here. Yeah, I was like, when you get into that stuff, it's really interesting. It's super interesting to hear these alternative oh, yeah. takes. It, it's very However, interesting. I was like, you have to be careful, because when you're re when you're searching for this stuff, you are only seeing that one side. You're not looking at the sources, and you need to sort of go in there with that healthy sort of almost skeptical where you go in and you look at both sides. Because when I when when you search for that um, fluoride in water is is harmful or something like that on Google, that's all the results you're going to get back is people supporting that. It's confirmation bias, but like you're going to get that all back. But he just keeps going deeper and deeper and deeper and. We were actually reading an article about fluoride and water, and it was like it even stri the the article that they quote it says people may have found links that it could possibly increase the risk of dementia. Possibly, may. There's so These many things that could increase the risk of dementia, and before like before that, <laughs> there, there, like that's the thing is like fluoride in high enough quantities is straight up poison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's the thing, everything is. Yeah, right. It is a to it's it's like, a toxin. If flor it's... yeah, fluoride is toxic in lower levels than a lot of other things we consume on a daily basis. But do you know what is also like a billion times more deadly than fluoride is nutmeg. <laughs> and like, look, I can tell you, I know so much about conspiracy theories because that's like my main like podcast digest. Right, mm -hmm. it's like I love I love listening to like weird out there conspiracy theory like monsters and shit like that kind of podcast. Yeah. So I can tell you so much about like lizard men living under New Mexico, but none of it's real. And if it was real, you wouldn't have fifty middle aged dudes living in a basement somewhere on YouTube telling you all about it. I mean, your conspiracy theories are pretty fun, you know. In like two thousand twelve. 2012, I was, like, looking up all this shit because, you know, like, playing Black Ops, and then I was, like, looking up shit, like, uh, uh, just, like, you know, JFK and all that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, and, like, look, I get it. Sometimes they're true. MK Ultra yeah. was a real thing, and it was fucked. But, yeah. like, there's no lizard men, the Earth isn't hollow, and it's round, for a matter of fact. The moon isn't a hologram, and the... I don't know what alien abductions are, but they're probably not little gray men. Just to dispel all them. But yeah. The, um, yeah guys, it... guys, I, I, I watch Independence Day. I, I freaking know I know, know what happens. Too. Randy Quaid sorted that shit out by sacrificing himself. R friggin' rip that man. He fucking yeah. sorted that out by flying yeah, that... the ship into the center, and right in their <laughs> dick hole, and blew up them, them aliens. That soft reboot movie was just alien propaganda. Yeah, just ignore that. No one needs to know that. Happened. Freaking it's okay. alien propaganda, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's it's, it's um, yeah. Again, but I I can't even remember the entire point. But it was just how it links. So when they were saying like you know may have found links to it possibly increasing, may have found possibly, and then someone just omitted that information. And the first comment on that is, "Wow, I can't believe that fluoride causes dementia." It's like they've just completely just removed the may of and possibly and just gone. Well, no, there's evidence is right there boys yeah could be it's true. also like you have a lot of like badly named articles yeah it's um like i say it's two sides to every story can't remember where we actually were, were going with whole, all of this shit 
I have no clue. I think we're we started at weird, sexy Peach Bowser, and now we're here. Ah, that's it. Yeah, we're yeah talking Peach about Bowser definitely a fan. Pretty cool. Talking Pretty about the Monday Matt thing. That was oh, that was that was a. It's not even actually. really much to talk about, really. It's not yeah. that interesting. It's pretty it's, mundane, if one might mundane, say. Man. But to sum it up, because we kind of alluded it, basically. Oh come on, it's not stream. that interesting. It was really funny. There's a two-hour stream funny, where but he is on. accused of uh, flagging people's videos for two hours. He denies this. They then challenge him to screen share and show his reporting history. He stalls for 20 minutes, coming up with bad excuses, finally shows it after probably altering it a lot, and it turns out, yes, he did actually flag a whole ton of people. And it's amazing. If you ever watch someone like just be caught out in the lies, it's like a real-life car crash, and it was great to watch. But um, actual news, the only thing that sort of caught my eye is that School Live, Gakko Gakoen, is uh, having a live-action movie released next year. There you go. If anyone wants to watch that, enjoy. Uh, what do you mean anyone? Everyone wants to watch it. Hey, Gakko, oh, yeah. I like School Live. School Live no, is actually I know. pretty decent. I never finished it, like, so I, I can't... I'm being a <laughs> massive hypocrite here by saying... I like it, but I never watched all of how it. Many, how many of you, how many uh, shows have you got where you liked it and then you just didn't finish it, no? Come uh, on, we all like that. I, yeah. I finished every show that is worth liking. Seriously, okay. I don't know if you finished every show that's worth liking. Well, if I watched the series, <laughs> that's a series, lot of shows, and I was like, I like this, then I watched all of it because I liked it enough to watch it all. You liked Asoi B whatever, and you haven't finished that. You liked Chio School Road, and you okay, but I'm that. not gonna like. Okay, fine, I'll fight you. Exactly. Fine, you caught you caught me in my yeah. lies. You caught me yeah. in my lies. Caught you in your lies. It's a bit of the cancel, uh, cancel, expose stream. I'll referee. I want a good, clean fight. Can we do no anime hit. blood sports? Like, legit? I think that'd be a great time. Can we get... Right, what What do we oppose? So, lowlies. Lowlies are wrong. Let's get pro... Let's get some pro lowly people, and then we'll have a debate with them. I mean, I think it. sex with lowlies is wrong. I don't know if having a lowly That's character I mean. is strictly wrong. I have nothing... No, I don't mind lowly characters themselves... The sexualization and fapping to them is what I oppose. They're, Tanya, Saga of Tanya the Evil, main character is a lowly. She's fucking great. I love Tanya. She's amazing. One is of my she even supposed to be lowly? Year. I thought she was just supposed to be five. She is a... Yeah, isn't that lowly? Little girl? Not these little girls? No, not necessarily. Well, I mean, it's complicated. She's Let's pretty, not talk about lowly. Let's not. Let's move on from the lowlies. Let's take a left turn out of Lowlyville and uh, head on to the summer season. I was going to say first impressions again. Some season first impressions, week eleven. Let's go. We get first I mean, impressions. Some, 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 some shows season. have just wrapped up. The uh, the sun is not as hot as it once was, yet it is still shining. Oh These my are God. first impressions from Dingle Brown side. You have no idea. Thursday was like the last hot day. I'm so happy. Oh, it's freaking oh freaking rip to freaking rip to any heat. Today 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 is the last day of the season that I'm going to wear shorts. You've still been wearing shorts. It has been yeah. cold in here, and I have fucking loved it. And I love. I hate the heat. Can we just say a huge fuck you to heat? I don't general? know. I'm kind of. I'm a bit of a heat fan. I like warmth, but heat, it's I, it's I not like well it's not like the common thing. And I like yeah. it better than scraping my windows. As we've discussed over here, you just get used to it. <sighs> I die. But yeah, um, summer season. Man, will not watch anything. Of course I haven't. Fair enough. Myself, I have just been keeping up to date with My Hero Academia. They've wrapped up the Hero License exam. It was good. Now we're going to get on to the fight of spoilers. Midoriya and Bakugo have a little bitch fit and have a little bitch fight. And it's probably going to be quite well animated and nice to look at. So I'm looking forward to that. It was good. It was enjoyable. I like it. That's it for me. Corin. Take it away. Okay. Uh, attack on Titan. Holy shit. He carved his face off in the ground, and then Aaron shoved a shit ton of explosives into his, like, face hole. Because his face was half gone. Like, on a perfect plane. I don't know how that works. Like, just fine grit, I guess, at that size. It was really cool when they shot him with the cannons, 
and they like explode over the wall. I thought it was a little corny how there's like three kids who are like exactly Aaron Mikasa and Armin. But yeah. like it, this time it was reversed and they were looking down from the wall at them and that was kind of weird. But like they got over that pretty quickly. That was cool. It's good that they delve into the lore a little bit and explain the history of uh, the Titans and cities and all that shit. Yeah, the story is great, although I have some uh, concern that there's still some Titan vial left around. But uh, I guess we'll see how that goes. Possibly, possibly. Might not be a big deal. But I would like to see some other characters become Titans, like good characters, you know, not just like, oh, here's this person... You kind of know you turn into a monstrosity in that kind of way. Yeah, now that you have the ability, mate. Well, I'm. Yeah, I mean, no, it, I'm not saying anything. Fucking, what's his face can turn into a tie-in with a fucking lick. Like I assume you need like a full injection to become like a properly formed titan, and not just like a weird sort of whatever the fuck he turned into. Like he was big, but he also couldn't fucking stand up. And like Weird skeleton. ground off half his body in the process of like going a couple miles. So what are you gonna do, right? Yeah, I yeah. You'll need you do need like the full injection, I believe. <clears throat> but that'd be yeah. cool to get like some other tie-in stuff going on, and then like yeah, it's really cool. I I hope Aaron's okay. I'm glad Historia like fucking sliced her dad in half. Uh, it was still a bit weird when she, like, landed on the cart and she's like, bitch, I'm a queen, and then just pieces out. I don't remember if she actually does piece out, but she just kind of says that to whoever happens to be there at the moment. Bitch, I'm a queen. I mean, she is. She is. She is, but it seems like a strange time to pick your audience. (laughs) Do you not know I am, motherfucker? I I am glad Aaron seems to have caught some... Um, semblance so maybe he'll be a bit more of a uh, character in the next half of this season <laughs> yeah um, again not saying anything not saying nothing yeah no it's cool so that was that and then I watched the final episode of Chio School Road which was really cool <clears throat> now here's the thing right throughout the entire season there is in the intro. There has been like the character that opens it kind of looks like Chio, but she has like army fatigues and a shotgun and like sunglasses. Yeah, I just thought that was like a avatar or something like a video game representation in one of the episodes. See, it, I don't th- no because it never that character never showed up. Okay, until. Because they got the basically most of the episode was just a normal episode, mm-hmm. and then they got to the end and they're like, "We had some extra money, so here's some free previews for nothing." <laughs> and then they had some like previews for what would ostensibly be like a season two, I guess, if it happens, and that's when that character shows up. Right. Okay. But otherwise, nothing. So. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I really want a second season to happen because that would be cool, but I doubt it. I just, it's a really cool show. I just don't have enough faith that everyone else is going to go. That was a really good show. Let's make another season of it. Yeah, I think the general opinion that I've got, like at least just seeing shit on the internet, and that, is that people enjoyed it, but like it's not like a a plus, like you know, an absolute sensational show. It's one of them that you'd say it's an enjoyable eight out of ten. Nine yeah, out of 10. It, that's the thing. Like, it's still a pretty good show, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe I don't know if it has a manga or not. I think this is a maybe it's a four comma. Yes, I, it I must say be a four is. comma. I want to say yeah. I can I only imagine. So maybe I'll pick up reading that because I really did like the characters because they have like an interesting melody going on, and mm-hmm. they all start interacting in weird ways. But the other thing was is they pulled a fucking. Uh, gotcha. And I kind of love, kind of hate when shows do this, but I think it's funny when an animated show does this. Is that they pulled that thing where, oh, 
it's actually a show within a show because like the last couple like the last minute or so is bloopers. Right, okay. It's all it's the characters like doing the scenes and then they like fuck up and they pan back and it's like, oh there's cameras and like a director and shit. <laughs> huh. Interesting. I suppose I don't mind that for a comedy. I I, I don't mind when they do that on a comedy. Any I, other show? It, it works for a comedy. It. Yeah, like I normally hate it, but it works for like a weird sort of comedy like this where you yeah, never know what's kind of, coming. Yeah, exactly. This one because it's a weird one. It's not out of left field. And again, doubly funny in the fact that you're pretending to shoot a, a live action in a animated show. It's just freaking pull it in every anime ever. You know, just right at the end. That totally wouldn't ruin, like, White Album 2 and Place the Beyond the Universe and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but we could have the an, an, anime cinematic universe where they're all just, like, we have meta animes with the director. Yeah, so, it's, stuff. Yeah, so does that you know, mean that, like, And they in turn are being filmed. Do you know how, like, loads of protagonists look like Kirito? Is that the same actor, then? Just hopping yeah, between yeah, different yeah, exactly. anime franchises? Probably. It is oh, just man. that actor. He's, like, the fucking... All the, all the trope characters are just like the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like the or, Tom Cruise of the anime world, right? Yeah. He's just everyone because he looks like you know. Oh, I a blank action hero I can toss in. He's or yeah, or yeah same voice act, same voice actors, same or just the actors and stuff like that. Yeah, in different costumes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <gasps> I kind of like this idea, but imagine again if every show ended like that. You know, like have they white... have to get they have to get their start in like you know a bit more seedy shows and like etchy, and then they work their ways into the legitimate roles. Everyone <laughs> like, starts in porn. Everyone yeah. starts in porn, like real manga artists. Hey, can we there get we in for go. an etchy show? I don't do that anymore. That's a yeah. Movie. You know that'd be pretty good. Every show just needs to end like that. We need to just ruin every series. I think it. I mean, that could be a show in and of itself. The, the show of an anime, the anime where they're just yeah. making a movie. The That'd show, be pretty a, good. A show, of, yeah, where they're like making anime, but they're all just characters becoming different anime, like legally not Kirito, legally not Goku. I was going to say the copyrights and the royalty payments, if they had to, if they wanted to use the rights to half of the series, would be fucking insane. But, but yeah, I know, it, it could be like sort of a 30 Rock kind of thing, you know, or like one of those sort of fake documentary style shows that are so popular these days. Yeah. Every once in a while um... we just snapped a person talking to the camera directly. Oh, they would be brilliant. Like, because they could be like, we want, we need the 80s Moe girl. Not the 90s, we need the 80s. And that kind of shit. Freaking great. pull it off. Studios, if you're listening, I'm Studios. Yeah, you're listening up. Take a listen to us. Okay. There you go. That's another lesson in this uh, school, back-to-school episode. Yep, Mon Raiders free... Happy Hour, disrupting the anime industry. There's a free uh, free pitch for a hit smash hit show. Make it. Do it. So um, speaking of those fun things that happen behind the scenes in shows, uh, 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 Cells at Work, right? Right? So Cells at Work is 13 episodes. Episode 12 came out this week. Fun little uh, happy show. Learn, yep. your, learn the cells and shit. Yeah, fun little happy show made for kids so they can learn about the body. Now, at the beginning of this episode, Red Blood Cell gets a uh, another Red Blood Cell to train, even though she's not very good. So it's hijinks that she's not being very good at her job, and like the younger Red Blood Cell is like very mature and stuff and knows a lot more of her, and it's kind of funny, right? It's mm -hmm. funny, and it's good, and we kind of like do a little talk about, we meet some of the cells we've met along the way, and it's all fun, and we like, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Until the nukes go off. Okay. And well, it's like the fucking intro to Terminator 2. Well. <laughs> right? Uh, because the person, the body, in this case, where everyone lives, had a fucking stroke. Well, like a real stroke, a fucking brain hemorrhage. Well, this is a show for children, and I was just having a good time <laughs> you got, you got learning duped. about the body. And I'm, man, you don't have, I'm distraught, because you don't, you have a stroke, you don't come back the same. Deal if you come back. 
Did a lot of cells die? They, the white blood cells, not like directly, but like, you know that. Remember in Dragon Ball Z when Cell first showed up and ate a bunch of people and it terrified you as a twelve year old? Yeah, that's what happens. Oh, they all got drained. There's just clothes. Oh, please tell me there wasn't any platelets. Oh, there's platelets. No. I like little platelets. The platelets look so scared. Like, it's really intense. It's so intense. It's not even funny. And there's another episode of this. <laughs> the director was just waiting for a chance to do this. He's they like, were, no motherfuckers ain't ready. The heat stroke episode was a nice sojourn. But, like, we we started this show with an abrasion. Like, they got a paper cut. That the body got a paper cut. That was it. That was the episode. They had a goddamn stroke. What the fuck? And they like set you up to because the narrator was like, "Ah, oh, cells going about their work, replicating, being born, going about their lives until today." <laughs> Freaking rip. Friggin' rip the hell out of Red Blood Cell. Uh, That's fucked up. It is. <laughs> up. They waited until the last quarter to uh, dump that shit on you. Right until the end. Like, I don't want this to turn into, like, and this is how death works. <laughs> I could genuinely. Honestly, that's how I could see this last episode. Yeah, it was the show, show that teaches you going about that death. Way too, and that just seems sad. And like, here's how. All the cells slowly die and expire. Because the show has been rots like, away to all, nothing. like, there's like fun actiony moments in this show, but for the most part, it's about cute cells being cute, right? There's little kitty platelets, and you know, red blood cells adorable. She's confused. She doesn't know where she's going, and like, it's not like adult themes or anything like that. It's just very, you know, kind hearted and earnest about what it is and now this is happening and I don't like it I don't like it I don't blame you to be fair that's quite a um, solid solid direction that they're taking there bit of a bit of a different one to their usual tack from the sounds of it my heart is heavy and then I went from that that horror show to Planet With which uh, ended exactly the way you expected it would end. It's like it didn't really end. It, I mean, it ended. It, it's kind of sad that they didn't have one more little twist in there, but, like, Planet With is a very solid 9 out of 10 show. Hmm. It's a very good... It's 12 episodes shown, and it tells a self-contained story. Everything's clearly explained. You don't have any questions come the end, right? It just it feels good, right? You watch that show to feel good. And, like, the kid who be grew up in the time skip, like, he came to terms with his, like, weird green-haired uh, lady, maid lady who was living with him. And he's like, man, we're just brother and sister, basically, aren't we? And she's like, yep. And they're like, no, that's our relationship. That's great. And, like... He ended up like, well, I mean, they don't like to explicitly say it, but like, he's definitely going to get married to a uh, fluffy haired uh, glasses girl. She's great. So. That's good. That's not like Japan to go, we're just brother and sister, right? Yeah, no. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Well, I mean, the thing is, right, is he's an alien and she's an alien. Neither of them are human. You're an alien. And um. her. His species ended up, like, being this terrible warlike species and, like, fucking obliterated her planet and, like, nearly committed a genocide on her people. Mm-hmm. But, like, because she, like, they're so, like, there's this whole path of power, path of love kind of thing, evolutionary-wise. Yeah. So, like, if you choose the path of power, you just end up going down this destructive loop, uh, road and end up destroying yourselves as a species. And if you choose the path of love, you're like, okay, you can kind of ascend and be a higher being and join, like, the galactic community or whatever. And they were both, like, their species were going down different roads, but, like, (laughs) 
she can, she eventually finds in her heart to like forgive like the people who destroyed her planet because like ultimately that's what you have to do. Right, if you're if you if, love, if, that's what you gotta if do. You, yeah, like you gotta be the better person. Like it's over. You gotta deal with the reality of it. I'm not like advocating like getting blown over necessarily. Like obviously the path of love people still have the giant fighting robots. Obviously. But it's I mean, more about on. like turning the other cheek kind of mentality. And you punch them in your giant robot. But you don't kill them. So there you go. That's 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 them it's, showing it, love. It's about redemption rather than just straight up murder. Yeah. Yeah. Planet oh, With is a good show. Murder. Definitely good. worth a watch. I kinda wanna wa- rewatch it if I get the time just to see it in a whole in a binge. In a binge. Because like it, it works really good serially. But I would kind of like to see it all at once at the same time. I don't know. Well, uh, like you say, you've got some time coming up, so yep, maybe I'll... before the end of the year. Maybe, although definitely now that we're in this weird in-between summer-fall season thing, I'm definitely going to watch uh, Devil Man Cry Baby because it's also spooky season, so it's time. Spooky. Yeah. Spooky season. Spooky, gay, spooky season. Maybe we should watch it, and then that's, that should be one of the things we do. Oh, come on, you guys made me watch a movie. You're not, you're not getting right. me to do that much. All right, is that everything that you watched there, Corin? That is everything I've watched. Okay, before I forget, because it is going to be spooky season Halloween, we're going to be doing some stuff. So I do have some homework for you, Manimal and Corin. I want you to do something guys, for do me. Something. It's not watching a show. It's reading a little <laughs> bit of manga. Not guys, much at all. Stuff. You fucking stop bitching about it. You'd probably be able to do it in the same time as you would with the with the Bleach film. Probably even less. Okay, I want you to find, <laughs> locate, The Shards of Evil by Junji Ito. It's like about 13 short stories, like really short chapters, um, and they're like self-contained horror stories. I want us to check them out, and then we're going to talk about them on one of the episodes in October. I don't know which one, but... You know, Isn't we'll give us fucking... I feel like... Isn't this just basically going to be the same thing as watching the anthology? I don't think the Shards of Evil were the anthology episodes. I may have to check that. I'm looking at lingering... Oh, there's such generic, like, open-sounding titles, it's impossible to tell. Futon, hyphen, blanket, haunted wood mansion, Tomio Red... Turtleneck, and I think there was a Tomio, I but I also I think t- Tomio is a more generic storytelling. I think that's more like a lady in white kind of story. I have read the only one I've read out of them is the tur- Red Turtleneck one. Um, it's a bit dumb, but you know, <laughs> it's basically has a turtleneck and his his head is severed except for a, a tiny bit, so he has to keep his head in place. Because this turtleneck is basically cutting his head off. If I'm, and, I think I'm seeing the cover, and that certainly looks like it. Yeah. Is where it's, it's the scream, but it's a turtle dude in a red turtleneck. Yeah, pretty much. He has his hands on his head at all times to keep it there. But yeah. Um, See, I just feel guys... like that's not how your body works. That's again, oh, that's the thing oh, with Jujito a... is you can completely morph your body into an unholy monstrosity by just. Changing your lifestyle. Humans <laughs> are made of fucking silly putty in Gene Dewey Joe's universe, man. Oh, let me tell you something that completely... Right, okay. Like, it's Here's... the snail people. When they roll them up, that doesn't... You can't do that. It just doesn't work. <laughs> Here's some spoilers for the turtleneck story. The whole point is, his head, if he, if he dares to move it, or if he gets rocked or anything... It'll detach, and his head will completely detach. That's the problem. It's it's attached by, like, a couple of nerves. That's it. Bit of nerves, a couple of veins, that's it. That's all that he's attached to, right? In one point of the story, he goes to sit down, and he pops his head up for a second. This means that everything is disconnected, because he clearly moved his head away from his body for an inch. It was illustrated that way. The woman with him comments... Your head was briefly disconnected for a second there. Are you okay? Then the plot point is... Are you okay? 
<laughs> I'm your not head was briefly <laughs> disconnected from the rest of your body. You okay, dude? Is that a problem? You're all right, mate. Do you want? Do you want? Do, do you want me like? Do you want me to call a doctor, or do you want like some paracetamol or something? Like, are you all right? Do you want some ibuprofen? But um, just then, put the aloe vera on it. The the fortune teller woman who put this curse on him comes and is like, oh! And immediately after this, she's like, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna slip a cord into your neck because you're only attached by a couple of nerves. And it's like, no, no, he isn't, because we just saw five seconds ago he fucking removed his head. So that's bullshit. Why ah. it's such a short story? How could you not make those things connect? But anyway, whatever. That's, oh, that's but it's that. one but of I want my you favorite to jokes. Just like the fortune teller said. <laughs> I want you guys to track down the shards of evil. There's about thirteen chapters. Like I say, they're all really short. Take about ten minutes to read, if that. Maybe five minutes to read them. Nice and short stories. We'll review in a few weeks, I don't know, two, three weeks. I don't know which episode we'll do it on. And then, you know, if there's any manga or anything that you guys want us to to read, talk to you, Manimal and Corin. Any of the audience, if you have any suggestions, then by all means, go for it. But yeah, we'll do that. Um, I just wanted to tell you guys before I forgot. So, with all that said, we have a bit of time in the show. <laughs> the time has come for us to... Do the back to school topic. How are we all feeling about the back to school topic? Uh, guys, in Spider Man, when you get to the the United Nations, they put the Italian and Finn flags together. So I got the best picture ever in Spider Man. Hooray. That's how Manimal feels about it. How do you feel about it, Corin? I, I feel I feel okay. Okay. I feel like it's not necessary anymore because we've kind of missed the boat. <laughs> well, I mean, what we could talk about how I'm not, how I, how the pierogies made me drop out of school. Do you want to? Okay, let's, let's have what have we got? Let's have a ten fifteen minute discussion on the, uh, on school. I had some questions and topics lined up, but I feel like the show's already gone long enough as it is, so I uh, will get rid of most of them. Go on, let's talk about school then. Let's talk about it. So, manimal. You were in school last year, or the year before, whenever yeah, it was. Yeah, I was there last year, and uh, the strike happened, and we were out of school for over a month. So I was like, this is lame, I'm going to drop out. And then I did. <laughs> Thanks. But the way I decided was eating those fine pierogies and Polish sausage. <laughs> Yeah, nibble on some Polish sausage and... You and that, was, that was the day that I sent you guys a picture of. I sent you guys lots of pictures of the food. You can recall back to a year ago. I, I mean, I remember, can. like, every time you went to eat pierogies. Yeah, because we got an essay from it every time. Yeah, because that was when I ate, uh, that was when I had the tea there, which was just pretty standard tea. But um, I took a picture of it anyway. So that that's how we note the occasion. But uh, it's one of those weird things where, like, you're not in school, and then your September comes, and you're like, should I be in school? But then you're like, but... I made the right choice because I did make the right choice to drop out. But so he's like, whatever you're doing, you want to do the other thing, you know? Well, you don't actually want to. Or yeah. I don't know. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. You always, I always wonder back because I never went to, uh, I never went to college. I never went to university um, because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And sometimes I do think back to that and I'm like, oh, I could have got that degree and this degree. But you know what? <laughs> Every single person that I work with has a fucking degree. And do you know what they're doing with it? Nothing. Fuck all. Well, yeah, that's exactly there's, it. There's a lot of degrees you get and you just do fuck all with Beth. Do you know how much debt that they've got f compared to me? A lot more. Yeah. <laughs> so well, yeah, that, I'm, I'm that's why I, I, was, that. I was really happy when I got to pay off all my, my student loans in just one go. I felt like I was, like, freaking nuking them or something like that. Like, I was just like, ha, ha. Take that. No interest, you freaking dinguses. I'd like to hope that you went and paid it like that. Have that, you freaking dingus. Well, Stick I did it. Down, I did it through the. I did it. The, <laughs> yeah, you stupid. You think you can get me by your scams? It's, it's pretty nice because that was one of the things in school, one of the decisions is like, I want to just make money and not have to worry about this shit. I just want to like a job and just like make money before I go back to school, which is what I'm doing now, you know? And uh, I'll probably go back next year, not this year. Well, that's exactly how Obviously, you know, I this thought. Year's, this year's, you know what I mean. This year's almost over. But I know what you mean. 
basically our back to school episode is saying get the fuck out of school abandon ship well, everyone please the, do the, not stay there more than you have to this streak showed me like how silly everything was and uh when we came back there was just an attitude of like i gotta get out of here you know yeah no no i appreciate that man i've been been down that road before with uh but I just, it just, it's, it's a feeling I consistently got where it's like, I have youth, I should be in school and not in a job, but it's also nice to make money. It's very nice to make money. I no, mean, I yeah, mean. you, you gotta hedge your bets, right? Cause you have to like really know you're gonna go in and like get a job you want off your degree or like, you know, be able to do something with it. And not yep. have your nebulous idea. Or if like if you're just going in to think, I just want to learn more, if you're that kind of person, good on you, but make sure it's not going to ruin you financially. Yep. Yeah. I mean, also as well, I guess, so to those who are in school, I'm go- we're going to try and go serious, something that we don't normally do in this show, but we'll go serious. To those who are in school, have a think about what you want to do, but don't. I think one of the things that I noticed when I was in school, and there was a big thing, maybe this is in the UK, but they had something called Connections. Connections was a kind of counsellor sort of advice thing to sort of push you in the career of your choice. But really what they were there for was to get more kids into college. Um, They were probably working on some kind of commission because that was what they were set on. Okay, yeah, oh, they this have, is, this they have that kind me. of thing here. Not called the same, but yeah, I think that's probably pretty it, universal. This reminds me of something that's very embarrassing to tell. Are you going to tell us? So, so in the middle school days, uh, let's say this was like 2009 or 2010, they're talking about college or something like that like already. And they mentioned something about the year 2013, so I was like, "Okay, we're not we're not all gonna die in 2012." And this is my proof, because they've already scheduled this. Because you know, 2012, no one really believed it, but in the back of my head, at that time, like 2009, I, I, 2009 2010, when I was like uh, 12 and 13, in the back of my head, I was just kind of like, "Could happen." I absolutely. If if I had to point to anyone I know. Who would have believed that 2012 was was a real concern? It would well, be you. 2009, 2010 was like the peak of it, and like I didn't think it would happen. But in the back of my head, that's when everyone was You're talking. Like, it like could. well, it do could. you remember? Do you remember people were talking about the day, like December, or whatever? And and like because we were like younger, everyone was like, it's gonna be crazy that day. Like people are gonna go mad. They're gonna run out in the streets. Yeah. They're gonna like throw shit around, rip car doors off, burn down buildings, loot shit. Yeah. Like there was like a There's genuine like happened. concern, and then the day happened, and it was like. Huh. We did have an end of the world party um, in in our local city centre. Yeah. Loads of the clubs, the clubs stayed open late, and they had an end of the world party, and it was great. Oh well, like, yeah, that, so that's because that, day. that that was my proof is because they were talking about college, and they somehow mentioned like 2013, and I was just oh kinda well, like, of course. <laughs> I was kind of like, there we go. Okay, if they're saying it on here, that means that like we're gonna keep living because it says right here. <laughs> admittedly i mean to, to equally embarrassing it's stuff like that you learn in school and uh when i got in year seven i was ele- 10 or 11 i was 11 i just turned 11 and we got into uh year seven and they were taught so this is high school grade seven of high school and they were talking and we we're in re and like the teacher just flippantly says something to the effect of ha because that would be like Believing in Santa Claus, and obviously we all know that's not real. And I was like, ha ha, oh, of course. But deep down, there was a little bit of me that was like, oh, wait, so he definitely isn't real then. Like, well, I must yeah. Have, I remember that and no, still believe. I know, because even in grades, in like, if I'd say like grade five, there was still in the back of my head kind of like, yeah. Maybe he does. Maybe like there was, he does. There's that, there's that one article that they always republish in the newspaper about from like nineteen like forty or fifty or even older. About yeah. like of course Santa is real. Da, 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 da. And when I read that I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's one of them things I was like, yeah, no, I don't believe. But deep down I was like, yeah, he probably is still real though. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't come to people after it after well, a certain because, age. And again, then when she said that it was like the definitive proof and I was like, oh the definitive proof. Okay. To me there there is never a definitive proof in my life. No one ever told me. The R the R E teacher fucking slammed my hopes down. But anyway, 
Sorry, I was, try- I was trying to be serious for a second. Um, I mean, between? it's not as bad, maybe, because how did you, like, learn originally that Santa Claus was not real? Uh, just kind of like Not just older. where you were not holding out hope for. Hey, this isn't the 12 days of Christmas yet. I mean, it's not, uh, but it's up. It's on topic right now. It's. I was going to say, it's not like us to uh, swerve away from a tangent, let's be honest. Um I it's kind of just as always getting older, just sort of everyone else. So when you start thinking about it, and you're like, "Well, yeah," hang it's on, like thinking about my mom's it a always, deeper. yeah. I was like, "Wait a second, my mum's always complaining that they don't have any money, and they're skinting themselves out. They have to buy all these presents and all this." And I was like, "If they're buying all these presents and they're wrapping all these presents, and I'm seeing them buy all these presents." What's Santa bringing? And then, like, you sort of oh. the wheels start turning. I'm like, oh, See, wait a minute. I never, I never, like, caught anything in the act. There's never been, like, a single hint of anything. Okay. I you mean, know? we were, a, just because we were a family of five, I think, because. Oh. So when I was 10, my youngest brother was five. So obviously, my mom is, she's not going to tell us. She's not going to say, oh, no, obviously, he's not. Yeah. Gonna, because yeah, yeah. she wants her little brother to still believe in it. So she would always, you know, keep that up. With him and, and my little sister as well, because she was like seven at the time. Um, so they're going to keep that up with him. Um, so I think that sort of played into it a little bit, where there was that little <laughs> doubt, because I was like, well, my mum's still saying it. So <laughs> yeah, 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 that yeah. kind of thing, I guess. And also just like media as well. Like you watch um, bad, you know, you watch programs where comedians and stuff were saying, you know, they'd say that he's not real or it'd be on a TV show or a movie. So. Well, even if they like mention it in a movie... It would just kind of be like, huh, yeah, no. Silly fiction. Well, also because I never I never watched any inappropriate movies when I was younger what either. Are the, what are the ones? That, okay, when I watched Die Hard, when I was about <sighs> 9 or 10, this is, this is another one that got me, was I was like, right, this is happening on Christmas Eve. Where's Santa? Like, he doesn't show up at this building. Why are all these people? <laughs> where, like, where... where this is happening over Christmas Eve night. Why are all these people awake? Why is Santa like not showing up in Die Hard? Yeah, I did think about that, and I was like, he doesn't go to adults. If you get old at a certain, to a certain point, he stops going to you. That was my rationale. Oh why yeah, not. you're trying to like make sense of it. Yeah. See, now this is how it worked with me, right? Because like. I saw the Santa Claus. I saw a bunch of other movies where everyone's like, Santa Claus isn't real. I'm like, ha, mm-hmm. dumb adults. Because at the end of those movies where they have to bring it up, Santa Claus, of course, ends up being real. Shows what yeah. they knew, right? Yeah. But here's the thing. I don't remember how old I was. Probably, you know, grade school, third, fourth grade, maybe. Who knows? Somewhere in there. You know, maybe mm. eight. And... um. The way it worked was my brother um, figured out that he wasn't real first, and I put that up to my brother being a bit more um, uh, pessimistic than maybe I was as a child. And Oh, how the tables have turned. Well, generally, I should say my brother's <laughs> more pessimistic in, than I am. But yeah. uh, he came up with, oh, Santa Claus isn't real. And then started telling me that, and I, of course, didn't believe him because I had no reason to actually believe him about anything that came out of his dirty, lying mouth. (laughs) But because my brother was my brother, he kind of, like, rubbed it in and used it as a pain point. Yeah. And eventually my parents just had to stop and go, okay, we'll tell him. So they bring my brother and I in, and they sit us down, and I think it was probably getting towards Christmas, which is why this thing cropped up in the first place. Mm Mm-hmm. And they look at us both and said, of course, my brother's unfazed by all this because he has already decided Santa Claus isn't real and that truth is a lie and that God is dead because I'm an advanced eight-year-old. My name's Michael. And um, I'm sitting there, though, and my parents open with, so we have to tell you something. I'm like, uh Santa Claus was real, but now he's dead. Oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! They're just freaking going hard. I know. And it, it's like they went on like he died a long time ago, so he's never been alive while you're alive, and this is just crushing little eight-year-old me. I can. This explains so much about you now. Oh my god! Does it ever? <laughs> Does it? 
<laughs> this is where the, the hopes and dreams of little innocent Corrin died, and the cold scientist came out. I feel like I'm not cold. I don't think I'm cold. <laughs> yeah, the cold scientist origin is right there. That's the beginning of the frickin' movie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if there is a movie in my life, we we should start it right there. But Sounds definitely a good movie. starting point. But it's, he's it's... dead now. <laughs> okay, here's the question. <laughs> he's dead. Wait, wait, that's a legitimately good question. If there's huh. a film of your life, what's the first scene? The Santa Claus? Claus is dead. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's the about... first line of the first scene. Because for just, me, it, you cut, you go from black, yeah. you flash to me. It's a little eight year old me. It's the late nineties, and you hear a voice from off camera. That's my father. Santa Claus is dead. That's a good way to start it. Okay, for cut me, cut to it's, black. For me, it starts four year old me getting my first bionicle, and then what about you, vacant? What's what's the start of your life movie? How old were you when you got your first bionicle? Four. Oh, geez, God, I feel old. Well, I turned uh, I turned five a couple months later, but yeah. I was... But when the first Bionicles were coming out, I was still old enough to like order like order now before this new line of toys comes out, and you get a free one with it out of the magazine myself. Yeah, I mean, my grandma probably helped me, but you know, I was twelve. I didn't know how to pay for stamps. Yeah. Um, I I guess I'd start from the birth, and we'd do a little flash. Oh, how through. boring! Nah, you start from the birth. You go start from the birth. <laughs> oh, man, you need to you need to have like okay. A, if you start at the birth, openings. how many how many years do you cover in the opening credits? Like the first. Yeah, like thirteen. Because like for for more, the way I'm looking at it, right, is that you you get Santa Claus is dead, and the opening credits covers up to like high school. Yeah, yeah, like because some it interesting to, shit happened. Gotta in high start school, off with so an exciting moment. That. Like you can't, you can't just start with like a birth because it's boring. If you start with like my a Santa birth Claus is dead or sensational. something. Uh, Shout out to Carmen, the Nigerian nurse that delivered me. I know you're jealous, Lego, but you know, pipe down. She fucking pulled me out of my mum, like <sighs> fucking ripped me out of there. I was almost cutting off. That bitch was so efficient, but you know, she's not a bitch. God, God bless our Carmen. Yeah, that's that's probably I don't know. I'd probably go from there, or uh, maybe I'd I'd do a, I'd do the part where you know the movie, the climax of the movie. So like when it, I'm about when I'm when I'm at the tipping point. What's the climax of your back. movie? I don't know because I don't know what I'm going to do in my life. You know what I mean? Well, right now, what is the climax of your movie? Like you're not going to die, but like to make a movie up to right now, what's the climax? Uh oh, god, I don't even know. Probably like Kansas for me. Okay, I I have to make an addendum to mine. It can't because it can't be uh, Santa Claus is dead. I just realized that because he started talking about his birth, and I realized a funny story about my birth. Oh. Right, because when I was born, it, my brother and I we were done through C section because twins are hard, <clears throat> and my mother didn't know this because she was already under the drugs. But after my mother went under the drugs and my dad was still, you know, around because they don't drug the husbands usually. Yeah. Uh, my dad's in, the, you know, the room or, you know, adjacent. And the doctor comes up to him and says, would it be okay if we put your wife in the observation room so this um, medical class can watch it? So the st- movie of my life would actually start from – um my birth and you slowly zoom in through the two way one way glass and it's just like 30 medical students studiously taking notes i was born to a fucking audience that's actually pretty wow, bad it's like cool. how many people are born that's like this that's like the beginning of like your your rock album you know i was born to an audience it's definitely like kicking off that way mhm actually i was born cool. to an audience and immediately started choking to death true story I don't yeah, know how to yeah. work that into Choked a lyric, but uh, it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, well, I don't know if you beat this. Uh, my first word was Jesus, so... Uh, uh-huh. I think mine was probably, like, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> I have no idea. Well, Not like must... a cursed baby? Yeah. Mine was probably gibberish. I don't know. I mean, it's not... It's kind of your first word if you're gibberish. You start making sounds, like, immediately. That's different. Yeah. Um... We're at court two. We've taken our fifteen minutes of serious school discussion. I hope you've uh, 
enjoyed that. Let's wrap up with some serious advice. Okay. These, are, these are all very good messages for your back to school. My, my <laughs> serious... Buy a lot of pencil lead and get one of those really big erasers so you can erase a lot because big my erasers serious... are for big mistakes. There yes. you go. My serious advice is find find a nice restaurant that you can go to and just like think about stuff. And then that restaurant go. will close and your your dreams will die. And a year later, <laughs> you'll be thinking about it every single goddamn week. You'll be eating pierogies from the store just hoping to find a taste of anything that is remotely close to it. And you will never internally let it go. Or externally. I mean, you've not done a good job of hiding the grief. Let's yeah. be honest. Um, <laughs> if you're going to college and like you're going to have an apartment for the first time... um. Buy a lot of spices. You know, go home over Christmas or whatever before you leave. Get your parents to buy you lots and lots of spices, because you're gonna be eating a lot of ramen and mac and cheese, right? And you're gonna want to, uh, you know, switch it up a little bit. So, spice rack, man. Spice rack, all day, all all day, every day, all day, um, all. <laughs> for me, if you uh, you know, I was I was saying, you know, there's a lot of pressure to go to college go to university to know exactly what you want to do Guys. as a career for the rest of your life. Yeah. But the fact is you've been in an education system and you're a child and you won't know what you want to do. You're, you will have an interest uh... and a hobby that you want to pursue. But don't worry. If that if what you choose isn't what you want to do for your life, that's great. You can go back to school and university at any time. Here's you can do uh... whatever you want. Here's something obvious, everyone. Get a job and stick with it and don't get like 50 different ones in like a month. You know, if you can, That's probably a good idea. life is hard sometimes, but do what you can do, man. You do your best, and then you die. Yeah. I went out there into the workforce, and, you know, then you can sort of plan what you fancy taking a crack at. But The important part is to never worry. stop trying, because the moment you give up is the moment you start failing. Yeah. If you're, still try if you're trying and failing, well, at least you can say you tried. And if you're getting bullied, if you're at school, right, just know... That kids are the biggest bunch of cunts in the world. Okay, between the age of ten and seventeen, they are massive cunts. Every single one of them. So you've got to give as good as you get. So if anyone insults you, insult them back worse. If they've got like a crippled mother or a recently deceased relative, go for it. Go give for it the to them. I'm, I'm not going to endorse them. that, but I, I will say it doesn't. Oh, I 100 percent endorse that. I, I know some people say it gets better, and I'm here to tell you, it doesn't get better. But it does get different, and change is as good as a rest. <laughs> it, it doesn't get better. It just gets different. It, like does, it does get different. <laughs> you, it really does. Like, my life you get now ones. as a professional is no easier and no harder than my life in high school. I'm not getting bullied anymore. I'm not a, the nerd anymore. I'm still a nerd, but that kind of comes with the territory. But, like, it's an entirely different hard. I guess. I don't and know, I if thought, I had to get thrust back into that same situation, I know how I could I deal with it now, right? Because yeah, you learn, yeah. you move past what was hard, and you learn how to deal with it. And by that point, you're on to something else that is hard. Life is just go. All of you school slots out things. there, you'll hop from hard thing to hard thing. So enjoy <laughs> Until it all dries up and you have five kids. And guys, if if but someone ever insults your favorite band, for. if someone ever insults your favorite band, kick them in the shins when you're playing soccer and just pass it off as an accident. <laughs> That's a technical foul. I did not do that. Oh yeah, physical education See, is a great is, time. This is why no one. This is why nobody messes with me because if they did. I just gave it back. You get a to... shin kick, swift kick to the shins in soccer. Well, that's a good thing. Okay, okay no, that's the in only a, that's the only classroom. that's the only time I ever physically went at somebody. But if you, but uh... verbally is a different story. Okay, if you are under attack, you're in a classroom. Here's the things you go for: fire extinguisher is a big fucking weapon. You're making a big choice if you're going to swing that at someone. Best thing to use is a chair or a stool, whatever you're sitting on. Probably going to be water or plastic. Probably going to do damage, but it's not going to do serious damage. So you're okay. I would go with that. My choice of weapon would be a chair or a stool if you have to. Okay, guys? So maybe a heavy textbook. It looks unconventional, but trust me, those fuckers will hurt. So bang. You, you know, actually, that, that reminds me how funny it was when, like, high school, you know, it was pretty amusing when you see, like, f just, like, fights in the hallway and you're just kind of like, 
Oh, so that's what high school is, right? Because, you know, middle school fights. Uh, I saw a great fight one time. There were two guys, and they are waiting for someone to throw the first punch, so they just never ended up fighting. They just kept, that's like... the best one. Like, they, they just kept, like... Go on, then, hit me. Go, they, no, you they, hit me. They just that's kept, some like, shit, man. I fight, but not fighting. They kept just, like, saying things back and forth, but they never actually did anything. Yeah, that's, that's the classic. Most fights aren't actually fights. It's just two dudes wailing on each other. Um, Here's another one. They say that... Um, what was it liquor before beer, never sicker, beer before liquor, you're in the clear. But here's the thing all alcohol gets you the exact same amount and kind of drunk. It's just that if you drink liquor before you drink beer, you are um, preloading basically. So you work your way off throughout the night with the weaker uh, beer, and you're not going to drink as much beer because you're already, you're already farther along. But if you drink a bunch of beer, and then you're farther in your night and think, I'm not that drunk, I want to get drunk now. You drink a bunch of liquor, and then you have more uh, loading at the end, so you wake up with a worse hangover. Because you're taking it all in at once. Ah, okay, okay. I always do that. That's that's the way I do it. I start yeah. with beer, and then I go on to the hard shit. Yeah, and it, if you've never drank before, don't spend your first night in college on, like, vodka strawberries or whatever. Vodka cranberries, that's a thing. Nah, ease yourself in. Uh, you know yeah, ease limits. yourself. Start with, like, piss light beer, man. Don't Just yes. work your way there. It's Drink. Alco- there's so much alcohol to consume, and it's real a journey. There is a girl I work with. She just had bourbon for the first time in her life on Friday. She's... Like Guys, my age, thereabouts. Never, never drink. Drinking is bad. Don't do it in your life. Drink, says but the man if you're who's been drink, drinking. Yeah, the man he took up drinking this year. But if only you're this year. Drink, yeah, this. Oh, that's it. You're gonna stop in 2019. Well, no, I was in like okay, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> the um, I would say if you are gonna drink for the first time, drink. But by God, make sure that you are with some friends that you trust and know. Because if shit goes south, they'll be the ones who are in charge of taking you home. And Ma- hopefully, if it's people that you like and they like you, they'll actually do that job for you. You know what's better? If you can, you find yourself, uh, in our terminology, a senpai who knows a little bit more about this than you do well, and will be guy, sober throughout the night. You know what's better is if you just do it by yourself in your base and you don't have to worry about shit. It's just like you just sit there by yourself and you don't worry about anything. That's alcoholism. No. <laughs> Wait, what are you talking about? I'm joking with you. I drink all alone all the time. I'm just saying it's I better don't. because you don't have to worry about embarrassing yourself. You don't have to worry about uh, having to go home because well, you're already home. House parties are your friend. That's true. Oh, not like so, I'm just saying, so. No, I mean like you, you don't have to leave, but like socially, maybe doing socially before you just start drinking alone. I don't know. It's kind of embarrassing yeah. though. No, it's not. It's literally not. You're the only one with this issue. Like, I, probably yeah, not the I only do. one with this issue, but like you if you the have one with his no issue, no issue drinking alone, but not. It's I don't know. I there's don't a difference it. between like drinking alone and. I don't know, because... guys. If I if I if I get like too in me, I might start talking about like Austria, Hungary, and things might get like pretty crazy. Cocktail. There's chill. there's various stages about drinking. Because Manimal, Manimal was uh, for the one who was very opposed to drinking all the time was the person who did by far the most drinking out of all of us when we were at, when we were at Kansas. It's true, and it's also a lie because he'll start talking about Austria, Hungary without any alcohol <laughs> in the system whatsoever. Yeah, that that's your was... go-to topic. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that went quite well. We got some advice there in the end, so there you go. Hope you can use that, guys. And if not, don't fucking worry. You it's guys are back in life. school. Just get through it. Just listen to this podcast. Just listen to cantala.bandcamp.com and you'll be all good. Yeah, just don't be a bell end and you'll be all right. Survive. Survive. Watch my Roblox do. videos. <laughs> we will. Let's Roblox out of here. Um, any parting shots from you guys before we head on into the night? Yes, and the end of this episode, we're going to forget Last Chance Heroes is a thing and progress from post-America to back in Canada. <laughs> this is actually the first song that I wrote on Nair's kitchen table. Um, it's the first song. I didn't think I was actually going to make it into anything, but I did. You know, it's a pretty exciting little ditty. It has Lego in the attic at the end, which we came up on the 4th of July when we were driving around. I don't remember how Lego in the Attic came about, but it did, and it uh, Lego made Lego in the it... Attic. Oh Lego my God, in the I Attic. I remember that. I remember that. 
Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe if you listen to the album, you will also find that it appears <laughs> at the end yeah. of this song. Maybe so, we'll, we'll, we'll listen to it right now as it happens. Yes, maybe maybe if you listened to the album, you would know this already. But I bought it. What else do you want from me? Worthless unless you listen to it. But yes, that'll be at the end of this episode sound well all of you will enjoy lego in the attic as well um that's it from us here that's 151 we're on now officially on the road to 200 so i hope you all have a brilliant week until next time we will see you in october which is fucking weird for our fall season first impressions depending on what's out next week but don't die survive high school and then we'll see you on the other side. And Bye, remember, guys. Uh, the hamburgers are perfect food. I'm out. I'm out. Hamburgers, pizza. I, I just fucking eat it all. I don't care. Bye, everyone. Love you. Bye. 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 And now it's time for the Trudy Chronicles. Another episode. <clears throat> Constructing her suit out of roots, like the Ukrainians in the prairies who rose buildings and townships in a new territory and land. Far away from home, and yet not far enough. The Chuni emerges once again, ready to face life in the city. Her clothes are merely leaves and branches, weaved together into a dress of primal fashion. Tarzan would pop a big one as he saw her walk and the grace from the forest remained her hair long and flowing with the natural breeze in the wind. No products, no advertisements saying this and that way. The chuni was merely a product of her own doing. Now in life, the chuni must wonder where to go, her home surely evicted at this point for life in the woods had lasted longer than she knew her phone gone no more possessions all thrown to the dusk the chuni now wanders and wonders how how did life get to this point from forest to city the Chuni is born anew, and in the lights and never-ending cycles, the Chuni must wonder how to get back. Is it possible? The Chuni knows this. And now, back in Canada from Cantala's exciting album, Post America. <laughs>
That's gross. 